BTES works hard to reduce outage events and minimize the length of time our customers experience an outage. It may seem simple, but the response to a power outage can be quite complex, require the orchestration of several complicating factors, involve many people, and be very costly. On Thursday, March 4th at 5.18 p.m., BTES's dispatch began receiving alarms on our SCADA system from the Intelleruptors in the area of King College substation showing a power outage. I was finishing up some work at my desk a little after 5 and I heard some alarms go off. All three phases of the BTES power lines were impacted and the Intelleruptor at King College Road automatically opened to isolate the fault limiting the outage to 823 customers along Old Jonesboro Road. A few seconds later, BTES's automated switching system opened the nearby interruptor at Canterbury Place to further isolate the problem. Power was instantly restored to 157 customers. The BTES dispatcher immediately radioed the night crew and called the on-call working foreman to notify them of the outage. I get a call from engineering on the radio saying there's a wire down and give me the street addresses. I've been hearing some radio communication um, from dispatch to uh, Brian Harbor in the night shift that we'd had a outage out in the Old Jonesboro Road area. I was almost back to the house and started hearing the radio chatter on the, between the crews and dispatch discussing an outage happening. So I'm proceeding out there and stuff's running through my head, the scenario, was it a car wreck, is a tree, is a tree falling, or you know, something got on the insulators, burnt the water down. We weren't sure the exact cause of the outage until April Eads, business development manager at BTES, arrived to the outage area at 527 p.m. My husband and I were getting ready to go to mom's for the evening. And as my husband's getting the keys and we're walking out the door, our power goes out. So jump in his vehicle and I start to dial our power outage line 9682837. We pull out of the driveway, we top the, the mid part of um, Queensgate, it's a little hill, and my husband says, there's your outage. And I immediately look up and we have lines down. I jumped out of the vehicle and took some photos uh, of the tree and the lines down um, and sent those to our, our supervisor engin of engineering, David Hacker. The on-call working foreman of transmission and distribution, Brian Harbor, was next on the scene. So as I approach up to the scene, I see fire trucks, I see police vehicles, and a lot of, a lot of customers, bystanders standing around. And I, I pulled down into the road off Old Jonesboro Road and I see the top of the pole broke. And uh, a tree had fell and fell through the line and broke the pole and fell onto a house. He started walking the lines out and saw that not only was there a problem at that house where the tree had been broken, uh, but there was another pole down the line that they had to get uh, uh, put back as well. So my husband was leaving to go out of town. We were on our way to drop him off and I got a, a notification on my phone. From that point, we have another communication tool that we use, it's a group chat. Um, and from there we can determine how many customers are affected, how long potentially this outage could be. And that's kind of where we determine, do we need to make a post on social media? Do we need to inform our public? The first thing we were able to do was Real close to where the tree fell, there's a, a switch that we could open up. We opened up that switch and energized the line from a, from a different direction and got that small group of customers back on. Back out in the field, Brian began looking for other ways to isolate the problem area and restore services to customers. He went to the broken pole that was located in the backyard of a customer on Old Jonesboro Road. Brian quickly determined that it would take all night to complete the necessary repairs. Uh, on my way in, I heard Brian Harbor explain that we had a broke pole and we need to call some additional crews. And as I continued on, I heard him say, um, you know, cancel that, call everybody. Uh, I have dispatch just start calling everybody they can on construction department because we need a lot of crews there to start working. I sent out a text to everybody and said, you know, we got two broke poles, a lot of damage out 
Jonesboro Road area. Um, need everybody possible that can be here to come on in. We just started calling all the linemen in and getting them headed to the site. And so I called in Cole's crew. Yeah, I was, me and my wife was in the truck. We was headed to watch my daughter. She's a cheerleader. We was headed to watch her cheer. And got the call from David Hacker. I had to turn around, go back home, change clothes, eat supper in the truck on the way back to the shop. So once we um, got some more information from the engineers and the dispatcher, um, it was just after six o'clock when we posted um, for the first time on Facebook. Back at the scene of the outage, Brian began providing a list of materials needed to our dispatcher. Additional crews began loading the items to take to the work site. Brian identified where to make repairs to restore power to 571 customers along Old Jonesboro Road. But there was a lot of work that had to be done for this to happen. And I report back to some of the guys that's coming in, tell them go ahead and bring the two poles and bring cross arms. There's a chance we can stand the top up and just splint them. Or if we can't, we just need to go ahead and change them. I, I got my line truck and started loading some poles and sent some messages out to some other guys, you know, as soon as they got here to give me a hand, you know. And I had one pole loaded. Uh, some other people had gotten here by that time, actually several people, and we split up and started loading a lot of material. We needed some equipment from here at the shop and some materials, so he went ahead and radioed in what material he was going to need to make some, um, cut some temporary dead ends in, in, in the line to do that. I know one of the guys that's on my day crew, he's coming in, so I'm, I'm talking to him on the phone saying, when you get there, just load up a few things for this particular pole and come on and leave everybody else there at the shop to load the poles and get the other equipment. He wanted me to go ahead and get enough dead end bells and dead end shoes and everything to help the Matt Prophet, which was the night man, which is already there working on cutting a dead end so that we could get the people feeding down towards Terra Hills. The biggest thing to do right now is to get Old Jonesboro Road back on. While work continued on Old Jonesboro Road to modify the electric lines and further isolate the problem area, BTES crews began arriving to make repairs to the broken poles and downed lines, while Aspen crews worked to clear the trees in the area necessary to restore power. I got there, we got the dead end and everything cut, which probably took us about two and a half hours before we could get the people feeding down King College toward Terra Hills back on. So now we've got a section of line isolated, like four poles isolated. So now we can close in the interruptor, and then that got the majority of the people in. At 8.04 p.m. when David and Chris used our SCADA system to remotely close a nearby interruptor at King College Road, service was restored to 571 customers along Old Jonesboro Road, including Terra Hill Subdivision. At this point, the outage was reduced to 85 customers without power in Candlewick Subdivision. Brian and his crew immediately began assisting other crews working in the area. We started getting the line truck and everything back into the back of those people's yards so we could start changing the pole out. Now we've got crews arriving with the poles. We're offloading the poles in this customer's yard. Well, when I got there, we pretty much all got there at the same time. I mean, all the crews and the material and the poles. We had two digger dirt trucks, so we split up. And we had um, basically two crews or two work locations. We had um, two rope poles and um, Brian Harbor and Cole Morgan was working kind of on one area and one pole and um, Josh Cunningham and Aaron Maxwell was working on the other. Me and Josh Cunningham got together and we talked about it, you know, the, the, we could have left the tree where it was at and it would have been okay uh, for us to be able to do our work, but we had to cut the, the wire and cut all the wire down and put it back up around the tree. Uh, which in that situation we've got a, a 216 count fiber in there and that and once we've seen that that was pretty much out the door. We come to the conclusion we just we have to get the tree off there some way. We made that decision then or Aaron made that decision that um, we need to try to get that tree off the house because mainly the 216 count fiber is a very big fiber and takes a long time to um, splice back if, if it's cut. Once we got was able to get the tree up a little bit and we got some of the weight off, uh, there was one large branch going up and that was not being pinned, it wasn't pinning any of the lines down. So once we were able to get that, that limb off, 
we, we, we had a lot more flexibility with our line truck to do almost about whatever we wanted, but we still had to cut it in small enough chunks to keep from damaging the customer's house uh, anymore. Took a little bit of time to do that, but uh, it was a very good decision to do that, to not damage the fiber, and uh, made it easier to get that stuff back after we got the pole temporary. The crew that Josh and Aaron was working on, Talking early on with those guys, they thought that they could splint that pole, which that is always quicker and faster if we were able to do that versus changing the pole out. That wasn't an option on the, the pole that Cole and Brian was working on. While some crews work to remove the tree from the house and clear the right of way, other crews work to dig a hole to install a replacement pole. Once we got in there, we uh, started hand digging a hole to set the pole because there was a fiber cabinet and a lot of underground facilities that come off that pole. We knew we had a cabinet damage, so we had to replace the entire cabinet. Uh, we had to wait until, for, as far as to replace the cabinet, we had to let the line crew perform their job, get the electricity back on, and then we could come in after that and work on the internet cable and telephone. So we actually had to hand dig a hole behind the old pole because we had, there's actually Five different wires coming down the pole. You had communications versus it was our fiber optics. You had cable TV, you had the telephone system was on it. Then we had some underground lines coming off the pole. So we had to hand dig a hole five and a half foot deep to set our new pole. And eventually we got the hole dug and we got our pole set. Got the pole and everything set. And me and Matt Prophet went up in the two bucket trucks and started transferring, got all the primary and stuff transferred. The other crews that were working were working on getting the tree and stuff off the telephone and the house that had fell and working on getting that other pole stood back up and planted. Around 1.45 a.m., Brian confirmed over the radio that temporary repairs were completed and it was safe to energize the lines. Crews then closed a manual switch in the field to restore power to more than 80 customers at 1.52 a.m. Brian and his crew began replacing a transformer. They completed this work and were able to restore power to the remaining customers at 3.38 a.m. Friday morning. So we was able to energize the water up from the switch to the, our broke pole, and then that got the remaining customers on, except for three customers on our broke pole. So we replaced the transformer, got the three services temporaried up for the night. And we had to wait until the, the line trucks was out of the way so we could back a trailer in and unload uh, the cabinet, get it set on the pad, the new uh, cable run up and everything put together. Uh, we finally got to start our task with the fiber about 2.30 that morning. So as customers' power is restored, we'll make contact with them, typically use Porsche, let it do the automatic callbacks. We finished that morning about 10 o'clock, the following morning, about 10, with had all of our fiber customers back up and running. Then um, I never did go home that night. Had to be on service department that day. So I just went ahead and slept in the truck a couple hours and he come in that morning. We went ahead and started our normal shift for the next day. The following week, crews were back in the area and spent several days making final repairs to the electric and fiber systems. The splinted pole was replaced and other temporary work was made permanent. When a tree falls, it's typically gonna cause a lot of damage. It's gonna uh, rip down wires and when it rips the wires down it'll damage poles. It was all from just a large pine tree. One tree. A large pine tree. One tree can cause so much damage. The more people who realize that there's overhead power lines there they need to watch where they're planting their trees, where they're doing their landscaping, where they're putting their shed. That's very important. What caused this outage? You know it was a tree. Uh, it was a tree that had fell and, and, and did lots and lots of damage. It can be hard to imagine that one single tree can cause such destruction and disruption. While BTES works to reduce the probability of outages and the impact to our customers, we need your help. Help us by preventing trees and other vegetation from growing into or around power lines and other equipment. In comparison, a small amount of effort from our customers can prevent major outages such as this one from occurring. We can't prevent everything, but with our customers' help, we can prevent a lot. When all was said and done, here are a few facts and figures from this one event. One tree caused two broken poles, 
823 customers impacted. 137,931 customer minutes of outage time. 225 strands of fiber broken and spliced. 21 utility trucks on site. 32 workers responding after scheduled work hours, 418 hours work, and a direct cost of the outage and repairs totaling over $50,000. One tree.